here's everything you need to know about mirroring your iPhone to your Mac with macOS Sequoia and iOS 18. How it works, what doesn't work, and some tips and tricks. Before we dive in, be sure you're subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on so you don't miss my latest videos on all of Apple's new updates and devices. So what do you need to mirror your iPhone? Well, it's pretty straightforward. You'll need a compatible Mac running macOS Sequoia, as well as sporting either Apple Silicon or a T2 security chip. And yes, that means this feature will work with certain Intel-based Macs. If you bought a Mac from 2020 onward, it will work, as will 2018 and later MacBook Pros, MacBook Airs, and Mac Minis. Any iPhone that runs iOS 18 will also be compatible. That goes all the way back to the iPhone XR or the second generation iPhone SE. Otherwise, they all need to be signed in to the same Apple ID with two-factor authentication enabled. I've got my iPhone 15 Pro Max alongside my MacBook Pro, both freshly updated. After installing macOS Sequoia, you'll see a new icon appear in your dock. It's not the flashiest of icons, but it's pretty descriptive. Apple provides a basic getting started guide upon first launch, but you don't need that. You've got me. After you enter your passcode on your iPhone screen, it's mirrored. Easy as that. You can see my lovely new iOS 18 home screen. By the way, if you want to learn more about customizing your home screen with this update, check out my other video that I've gone ahead and linked here. Mirroring works shockingly well. It is super smooth, animations look great. I'm really impressed. There's a lot of polish on this Apple already. Like that icon I mildly mocked earlier. If you take a close look, it changes based on your phone. Depending on which model phone you mirror, the phone image adjusts. It's also awesome that your phone and your Mac don't need to be connected to the internet for this to work. Think of it like AirDrop. They need to be within general proximity to work for them to establish a peer-to-peer -peer connection. There's lots of tips and tricks though to get the absolute most out of iPhone mirroring. And I'm gonna tell you them. If we could pause for just one second, I have to thank my sponsor for this video, ESR, which is just launching its new Geo Wallet with built-in Find My. I see so many people using wallets and then just sticking an AirTag in there. Not only is that bulky, but you have to keep replacing that battery all the time. The Geo Wallet looks like a traditional bifold billfold that is easily pocketable. It can come in a bunch of different great colors, and I have the black one here. It's made out of an eco-friendly leather that meets RCS standards that makes it both durable as well as eco-friendly. There's tons of space in here. When I open it up, you can see we have spots for two different IDs here on the left-hand side. On the right, we have several card slots where I can store all my credit cards or additional IDs or business cards. There's a pocket underneath for receipts or cards. Then in the back, there are two separate compartments to store your bills. This actually is Apple certified Find My that allows you to find your wallet using the Find My app. It's super easy to add to the Find My app. And once it's in there, you get to enjoy many of the benefits of an AirTag, but in a much better form factor. For example, you can see its location on a map, whether it's with you or its last known location. You can play a noise, you can get directions to that last location, and my favorite part, you can get left behind alerts. That's right, so if you leave a restaurant, it'll alert you that you left your wallet there before you get home and realize it. It's fantastic. It charges magnetically with its included USB-C charger. It has little magnets on there, just snaps into place two hours and you're good to go for five months. I just do mine like every few weeks and you're basically good to go and you'll never have to think about it. If you buy an AirTag and a wallet, it can get expensive. Save some money and get the ESR Geo wallet, especially at the early bird price of 38 bucks. This is launching now, so if you want to learn more and pick one up for yourself, there's a link in the description as well as pinned in the comments. Now let's get back to the video. It's pretty intuitive to use your iPhone when mirrored, but some gestures are a bit tough, like going back to the home screen, opening the app switcher, or accessing Spotlight. You can click the tiny little bar at the bottom to go to the home screen, for example, but it's tedious. Instead, there are built-in shortcuts. Command plus one goes to the home screen. Command and the number two opens the app switcher, and command and number three pulls up Spotlight. It's so much quicker. Media can also be routed through your Mac, albeit with some limitations. 
any protected content won't be able to be streamed, but other content like YouTube or TikTok work just fine. Not only does the video play, but the audio is routed through your Mac speakers as well. Scroll through Instagram Reels while sitting at your desk, leaving your iPhone docked the whole time. Speaking of which, that's another of my fave tricks here. On my desk, I use a MagSafe charger with my iPhone placed landscape using standby mode. I keep widgets up on the screen like time or my calendar. Since mirroring keeps your iPhone screen off the whole time, it's able to stay right there in standby mode while you access anything that you need on your Mac. And speaking of landscape mode, that's a nifty little trick. Anytime you access an app that works in landscape mode, the mirroring interface will automatically change. No need to try to rotate your phone or manually change the interface. Like in YouTube here, it's portrait, but if I hit the full screen button, the whole thing rotates and I have a full screen video. Let me know down below in the comments how you can envision using this iPhone mirroring. So there's quite a few things that work in landscape mode, like games, if you'd like to try them. I just booted up a few Apple Arcade titles, which I know pretty much all of them are available natively on the Mac, but I wanted to see how well they ran streaming from my phone. They were all very smooth. I even tried going crazy and getting into Assassin's Creed Mirage. As taxing it is on my phone, it still played through the Mac fine other than, you know, trying to make the controls work with a mouse. Finally, let's hit on notifications. These are huge, though I admit they can get unruly. Your iPhone notifications show on your Mac and are differentiated by small iPhone icons in the lower left-hand corner of each of those notifications. While I do get a lot of notifications and it, it made me want to rethink my focus mode rules, I did find them super useful. These will of course be very person specific, but for me, I'm able to get my blood sugar alerts that I'm drifting too low or too high and can even see when my kid is awake in his crib. I don't have to touch my phone to get an alert on the screen that the little guy just escaped. Mirroring is ultra secure. Not only does your phone remain locked and protected, but Apple disables things like the camera too. When mirrored, Apple goes as far as to remove Face ID and passcode options from settings. That way no one can get onto your Mac, mirror your phone, and then change your login or lock screen credentials. Mirroring is one of the most sought after features coming to Mac OS Sequoia, along with the Passwords app, Apple Intelligence, and much more. Be sure you're subscribed to the channel and I'll catch you up on all the other new features in Mac OS Sequoia in a future video.